MLB Insider. We welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show, uh, John Heyman. How are you, John? I'm good. How are you, Rich? I am doing just fine. So it seems to me, I'm going to start overall with you right now, okay, an overarching story. It seems to me that there is a culture struggle in Major League Baseball right now between old school and new school, that there may be some old school guys sitting in the dugout telling guys to throw at people because of bat flips and staring in the dugouts, and the young players like Josh Donaldson and young players like Bryce Harper just aren't buying this sort of style of baseball, and that's what's playing out right now. Would, would, where do you come down on that supposition? Yeah, I think that's fair to say, and that probably extends to the fans, too. The new, new fans, fans, the old fans uh, probably differ on that. Um, I'm actually, even though I'm old, I'm probably new school on that because I, I do like the fun element of the game. I don't want that taken away, so I'm with Bryce Harper on that. I'm with uh, Batista Batflip. Uh, I enjoy the emotion out in the field, and I uh, think everybody else should too. But I guess if you're caught in the middle of the action, you've been playing for 20 years, uh, you may not be as excited as I am or uh, Bryce Harper or some of the uh, younger guys or the new school guys. So how does this all wind up? Because it seems to me that the unwritten rules are are, are taking precedence almost every day, and the players are having an awful difficult time trying to police themselves. Well, that is uh, the case. Uh, we had this issue uh, with uh, Rugnet Odor yes. hitting uh, Bautista, uh, and it's hard to believe Rugnet, who's probably about 22 years old, representing the old school there, but uh, he certainly was on the other side of that bat flip, and uh, his uh, case will be adjudicated today uh, ah. down in Arlington, Texas, to see what goes on with that. But uh, uh, this is kind of a simmering story. I'm with you on that, and I'm not sure how it's going to get resolved, but I hope... I hope that people can uh, end up on the new school side. I would think that's the way it goes because uh, eventually, uh, you know, the older players will uh, uh, not be there, and we'll just have we'll all just have fun and be have, be one big fun happy family. I guess so. Point. I guess so, John. Because I mean, <laughs> Donaldson made an interesting point after being thrown at twice by Phil Hughes, saying if baseball is now protecting the catcher in the Buster Posey rule and is protecting the second base in the Utley rule. Where is the protection for being thrown at? Uh, and, and I know that opens the Pandora's box similar to what the NBA just went through with intent with Draymond Green. But w maybe Major League Baseball needs to take a tougher stance on this sort of thing. Yeah, you know, they, they tried that with Ollendorf, and he was uh, one of the first ever to ha have a suspension completely overturned. We, we've seen bans uh, uh, where a game or maybe even two games are knocked off, but he had a three-game ban, um, and he can't read minds, I guess, and got knocked down to zero. I mean, it's the Princeton man. He's 28 and 36 on the field, but uh, he, he's won his arbitration case, and now he's he had a ban overturned, which never happens. But, yeah, if you, if you can't... There's nobody in the paper saying I, I threw at somebody on purpose, and it isn't so plainly obvious. It's hard to suspend somebody. And the MLB did not suspend Matt Bush. I would have said he clearly threw at Bautista. In my mm -hmm. mind, I would have tried to suspend him probably there. But you can't read minds, and I think baseball uh, probably got it right in terms of uh, what the arbitrator would have ruled because uh, unless the player admits that he threw at uh, the hitter, uh, the pitcher admits it, uh, it's hard to prove intent. John Heyman, MLB Network Insider from MLB Tonight and, uh, and a host of shows uh, joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So now that we are reaching the Memorial Day quarter uh, post and you've got Matt Harvey in his 5'7 ERA tonight, you've got David Price, Dallas Keuchel, Chris Archer with their bloated ERAs, which one of those pitchers do you think uh, ha has had the most troubling start in terms of being able to turn it around over the rest of the season. You know, I, I'd probably say Harvey. Um, I, I think there's prob probably some concern coming in. We, we knew about the innings uh, debate last year and how uh, originally uh, it was supposed to be, at least in the agent Scott Boris's mind, 180 innings. Um, the Mets had a little bit more flexible plan depending on the playoffs, and obviously they went all the way to the World Series. And uh, Harvey eventually said, I want to pitch, and went well over 200 innings. And I think there was concern coming in whether, uh, you know, that was too much. We don't know. There really isn't a precedent, as Mets and other people pointed out. We don't know whether that really is a factor. But, uh, and, and this isn't evidence that it is, but I, I think there was concern coming in, and he has not been good. Um, his pitches, while he's still throwing 93, 94 miles an hour, a couple miles an hour off the usual, 
uh, are, seem to be lifeless, according to the scouts. That's the one that would concern me. I think Price is coming around. I have no concern whatsoever uh, for Archer. Um, Keiko is uh, a mystery as, uh, as well, so I'd be a little concerned there. But, but Harvey's the one that sticks out, and you now he's going to pitch tonight. Uh, he is insisting on pitching. There had been some thought given to sitting him down, uh, giving him a rest, but uh, they're listening to Harvey once again. They uh, they listened to him in the World Series. That was a mistake. We'll see if this is a mistake. That's right. He did listen to him in the World Series. Uh, who is the best uh, off-season acquisition over the first five, six weeks of this season, John? Uh, well, you know, I think there's a few candidates for that. Uh, I think I tweeted today Johnny Cueto might be, and um, that would be my pick right now. But obviously, uh, J Jordan Zimmerman has been great. Zobrist has been great. Been uh, great. Kind of a late signing by the Cubs yeah. out of nowhere. And, boy, Cespedes has been unbelievable. If you just look at what he has done for the Mets uh, you know, in the American League, uh, he had about a 480 uh, OPS through several years, and he's had a 980 OPS with the Mets in in – close to a year now, um, so it's no fluke. Uh, I'm not sure uh, in the National League. I don't think the National League pitching is any worse. Uh, I, I, the ballparks are, are not any smaller. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but to have an OPS 200 points higher with, with the Mets is uh, pretty spectacular. So, I, I mean, it seems like I'm talking Cespedes up. I had Cueto as my pick earlier, but there are a handful of really, really good uh, acquisitions to this point. MLB Network's John Heyman joining me here. Uh, is Kershaw the best you've ever seen? And and I know that what that says. Uh, I know how yeah. long you've been covering it. But he now has 95 strikeouts and five walks so far. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really it's ridiculous. Amazing. Yeah, and, and we've and, through and, an era of great pitchers. No between question. Between Pedro and Glavin and Maddox and Randy, Randy Johnson, Johnson. Uh, sure. and all the others. Uh, I, I I think uh, maybe so. I, I think I think that might be the case. Uh, that I at least since, since I've been covering and I've been covering since the mid '80s. Um, you know, I, I, I Pedro is the one that stands out in my mind uh, as the best. And then uh, now that you mentioned Kershaw, I, I think I have a, a hard time choosing between those two as the best. But boy, uh, Maddox is right there. John, Randy Johnson right there. I mean, Clemens, you know, that's debatable, depending on what you want to count. But uh, looking at the record, it's pretty darn good as well. But I, I'm, I'm going to say I, I hate to I, I hate to weasel on this, but I'm going to say coin flip between Pedro and, and Kershaw. No, I mean, obviously, that's what we have. This is what it's called. It's a debate, and you just bandy things around. I mean, Sale's 9-0, and and the White Sox are 8 over 500, so his value can't be underestimated. But the Dodgers are 500, and without Kershaw, they're not even sniffing that mark right now and yep. and there's all sorts of howls about Dave Roberts in his first six seven weeks at the helm uh, of the Dodgers what Kershaw has done I mean is MVP type stuff not just yeah, I don't think there's any question about that I mean he has been an, an MVP uh, type since he's been there really uh, one of the greatest pitchers of all time uh, you know we may see him win, win another three Cy Youngs um, I, don't, I, I think you're absolutely right on that um, but it is interesting to see uh, what's going on around baseball with some really dominant pitchers Arietta uh, since the middle of last year has been as good as anybody uh, including Kershaw uh, won the Cy Young last year obviously and Sale doing in the American League with the DH in a tough division. I think that division's pretty good. Detroit's coming on now. I think Cleveland's a nice team. Uh, Kansas City, obviously, the world champion. So you've got four teams to be reckoned with there. Obviously, Minnesota's not uh, one of those teams. But uh, that's a tough division. Uh, he doesn't pitch in really a pitcher's park. Uh, he's really, really uh, done himself proud, and uh, he's made the adjustments with the help of Don Cooper, and is a different type pitcher, completing games now in the American League. Yes. I mean, he has been as as impressive as anybody this year, uh, and certainly the Cy Young favorite in the American League. So last one for you here. Uh, mindful of the fact that the Blue Jays were right around 500 at the trade deadline last year, and we saw what they turned into, who could be that team? I mean, I know Lincecum coming back for the Angels, and, and Sosha always has this team uh, ready to go on that rip of a, of a winning streak. Who, who might be that team that can have the second half as that's materializing at the quarter post for you, yeah, John? Yeah, I mean, the Angels are an interesting choice, but, boy, uh, that Garrett Richards and, and Haiti injuries, uh, that is a really, really, really tough situation for them. Right. Um, I mean, I think it could be Toronto again. I, I saw Toronto and San Francisco as the World Series teams this year. 
Uh, obviously, the Cubs have been pretty darn good right now, so I, I really, I'm not really bragging on San Francisco. Even though they've been very good uh, right now. The Cubs, which everybody picked other than me, basically uh, look like the favorite. Uh, Toronto could be that team again. I think they have underperformed uh, as much as anybody has this year. It'd be two games under uh, with that lineup. I, I mean, I know Russell Martin's going to have to start hitting. I think he's got one extra base hit and 100 plus plate appearances. Uh, Tulo's got a sub 700 OPS since coming to Toronto, as Joel Sherman pointed out in his column today. Um, I mean, they are really underperforming offensively. Uh, I think their pitching is pretty solid. They got to shore up the bullpen a little bit, but. I think Detroit could come on, and uh, of course Kansas City and, and uh, Detroit from the uh, AL Central. I think Detroit uh, was underperforming. It's funny how things turned around. I think Brad Ausmus, if he hadn't won that game in Baltimore, they had that contested check swing call on J.D. Martinez. Yep. Buck Showalter up in arms. Clearly looked like he swung. It was called a no swing. J.D. Martinez homers. Detroit goes on to win that game. I think Ausmus was on the cusp of being fired. They win that game. They get to play Minnesota next. They sweep there. I think they're on a roll now. So uh, I'm looking at Detroit and, and, of course, Kansas City being only two over. When we know how, what a good team they are, I'd look at them as well. So at least three teams in the American League, I would say, candidates to be the Toronto of last year. John, thanks for the time. Uh, we'll have you down, uh, down the line. If you're All so right, well, great you talking to you. Bet. Same here. That's John Heyman of, uh, of MLB Network. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.